Well, that was uh, something, wasn't it? That, that was something, yes. Uh, it looks like we're uh, still trying to work out all of the technical details, but you guys are such troopers. Thank you for your patience. I promise that we will get this and we'll have an awesome class. Everybody's rolling in. That's fabulous. Miss Jasmine, can you say again? I didn't hear you. Miss Jasmine, did um did something happen to everyone? Or yes, yeah, something just happened me? to everybody. Okay. So don't worry. It's nothing with your computer or your system. Okay. It's okay. it's just a Zoom thing. It happened okay. again. Yeah, don't worry. Cool. All right. So I will jump back to what we were doing before. We were so rudely interrupted by the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. So. I was going to read just a little tidbit from this book. So this uh, fun, wacky, gross fact is from Mesoamerica in the 1300s, so a long time ago. It says, on their best behavior. Naturally, in a place where people could easily see what happened to the emperor's enemies, crime was almost unheard of. From an early age, the Mexica had a huge respect for the laws. Even little kids faced some pretty tough punishments. Being sent to their rooms? Nuh-uh. They were held over a fire of burning hot peppers, which stung their eyes. They were pricked with cactus thorns, and grown-ups had it even rougher. They could have their lips sliced off for saying something bad about the emperor. So... Let's all be thankful we don't live in 1300s Mesoamerica, because <laughs> it sounds like if you were a kid and you did something wrong, uh, your punishment was your eyes stung with hot peppers. So that doesn't sound pleasant at all. All right, so today we are going to be doing a lesson on Argentina. So what we'll do is we're going to start by reading the chapter in the book. This is the book right here the story of the world. Um, if you have a copy of the book, that's great. We are going to be on page uh, 300 and, let's see, this starts. 373. Yes, so then the map is on 372, so 373 is where the text starts. If you don't have the text, don't worry, I got you. We have um, a digital copy that we will read together. So let's do our best to stay muted while we're reading, unless I call on you to read, in which case, go ahead and unmute yourself, but that'll just minimize the back noise. So let me pull up the chapter for us. Let's see, actually cancel that for a second. Do we need to take notes on this? Don't worry about notes right now. Fabulous question. Uh, we will actually do the outline for this chapter, the note taking tomorrow. And in class today, we're just gonna focus on uh, reading the chapter and then engaging with the material a little bit more. So without further ado, here we go. Time to go to Argentina. Can everyone see the uh, map? Give me a thumbs up or nod your head. Awesome, you guys are great, okay. So here is our map. We are going to be talking about Argentina. So that's right here kind of in the middle. Buenos Aires is the uh, capital city there. That's why it's highlighted. And this is in South America. So we have chapter 34 here, dictators in South America and Africa. Before we jump into the chapter, can somebody uh, unmute yourself and tell me where, what other countries have we seen dictators in kind of popping up after World War II? South, no, North Europe and South Europe? Uh, so we had in North Vietnam, we had Ho Chi Minh. Who did we have in, who did we have in China? What? Mo. We had Mao, yes, very nice. In, in Korea? Yeah, who, in, who was in Korea? Vladimir Putin. That, he's going to be a little bit later on in Russia, but we have uh, Kim Il-sung in oh. North Korea and in um, the USSR, the Soviets, Joseph Stalin was their dictator. So we're kind of sensing a theme, right? After World War II, all of these these communist dictators start popping up. So let's see if there's a similarity to what happens in Argentina. So Argentina's president and his wife. 
In the 10 years between the end of World War II and 1955, the South American country of Argentina put a new president into power and then threw him off again. This is a theme, we've seen this multiple times in our readings, that somebody gets into power and then they're booted out. When World War II began, Argentinians were divided about what side Argentina should join. The people of Argentina were descended from at least four different kinds of people the original Native American inhabitants, Spanish settlers who had come to South America in the 17th century, the Italian and German settlers who had arrived in Argentina during the 1800s. The Argentinians with Italian and German backgrounds hoped that their country would join the Axis powers. Other Argentinians wanted to join the Allies. So America, we were with the Allies. The president of Argentina, Ramon Castillo, decreed that the country would remain neutral during World War II. Does anyone else know the other country that stayed neutral in World War II? Christiana. Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, fabulous. That's why if you watch Sound of Music, they all go to Switzerland because neutral. Uh, so he was like, yeah, Argentina, let's, let's stay neutral. Um, so although Argentina didn't fight on either side, it was friendly towards the Axis powers of Italy and Germany. During the war, Argentina even sent a few of its army officers over to Europe to learn new strategies from the Axis commanders. One of those officers was a captain named Juan Perón. Right at the beginning of the war, Perón went to Italy to study the best ways to fight in mountain territories. He spent year, two years in Italy watching the fascist army fight in World War II, learning techniques from the Italian officers and observing Mussolini. So Mussolini was the dictator of fascist Italy. Benito Mussolini. Peron liked Mussolini's idea about how to run a country. He agreed that a country should obey its leader without debate in order to be strong. Even though Italy was at war, Peron thought that Mussolini's fascism had made the country purposeful, organized, and efficient. In 1943, four years into World War II, Juan Perón joined a group of military officers who wanted to take over the government. He had returned to Argentina to find that its president, Ramon Castillo, had become weaker and more unpopular than ever. The poor people of Argentina believed that Castillo only cared about the rich landlords and factory owners, not about the hungry workers who were struggling to survive. Rumors had also begun to spread about the coming presidential election. Ramon Castillo was up for re-election, but now everyone was whispering that Castillo had already picked a rich plantation owner to be the next president, and that his government was ready to tamper with the votes in order to make sure that Castillo's chosen <laughs> candidate was elected. Oh, never mind. Oh, he muted, he muted. So does that sound like a real democracy? No, if he's like, oh, we'll let the people vote and then we'll change all of their votes so that they voted for me. Yeah, that doesn't sound quite fair. Um, I'm sorry, um, what page is it in the history book? It's on 373. All right. But we're on 370. Yes, now we're on 374. In the uproar, the military officers marched soldiers to the Casa Rosada, the president's house in Buenos Aires, and suggested that Castillo resign. So if a bunch of officers are marching to your house and suggesting that you do something, maybe you want to listen. Faced with all those armed and hostile officers, yeah, Castillo had no choice. He left the Casa Rosada and his position as president. The officers then set up a junta a military government to rule Argentina. A military government doesn't seem any more fair than a president who had been elected by fraud, but Argentinians seemed willing to give the junta a chance. In this new government, Juan Perón was put in charge of taking care of working people. Perón wanted to make sure that working people were pay paid a fair wage and had money to live on when they were too old to work. He introduced laws to bring these reforms about, and this made him very popular with the working poor. But Perón became more and more unpopular with his own government. The other officers didn't like the idea that Perón had so much popular support. 
and they were also worried about Perón's admiration of Mussolini. In 1945, when the junta had been in charge of Argentina for two years, the Axis powers surrendered to the Allies. It was a good time to point out that Perón had supported the fascists, who were on the losing side. On October 9, 1945, Perón was arrested by his own government and put on a small but very comfortable island where he couldn't command his supporters to rise up and free him. Anti-fascists joined, but soon the working people who loved Perón demanded his release. My friend Caden, can you read that next paragraph? Yes. Um, we're at John Perry. Oh, um, I could not hear you again. Like, could you say that again? I thought you said so. So, Katie, whenever you're ready, you can start reading Juan Peron. Yeah. Juan Peron was engaged to be married to a young woman named Marie Evariti. Maria Eva Duarte. Duarte, an actress he had met several years before. <clears throat> When Eve heard that her fiance had been throwing into jail, thro had been thrown into jail, she encountered encouraged encouraged the working people of our Argentina Argentina to demand an explanation. What had happened to their champion? Perfect. Thank you, Kenzo. Do you mind reading the next paragraph? Crazy. I keep on changing. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want me to start now? Yes. You're ready? You're ready. These workers nicknamed Descomisados? 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 Or shirtless ones because they worked without shirts in the hot sun of South America. Gathered in the streets in the thousands, demanding per persons release. The other officers could see that per what is it? how do you pronounce that over Perone. Perone would have to be set free. All right, next paragraph. You can keep going. He was oh, to be set free. He was on he was on October 17, 1945. Perone was set free. He went out to speak to his the supporters. A huge mob cheered when they when he appeared and waved torches in celebration. The next day, the workers all stayed home from work and took a vacation day in celebration of Perón's release. They called this day jokingly the Feast of Saint Perón. By arresting, sorry, by arresting their champion, the officer officers of Juante had lost the confidence of the working people. Is that am I pronouncing that right, Juante? Jahunta. So, <laughs> couldn't hold on to its power. The members agreed to hold an election for a new president. All right, fabulous. Thank you. So basically, um, the working class said, we want Perón, he fights for us, and we are going to push out this military government that right. hasn't been super great for us, and we're going to bring in our guy, Perón. And I mean, descamisados, shirtless ones. Is that a very nice name to call these people? Yeah, not, not really. So they did it. Juan Domingo Perón won the election. And as president, Perón went on trying to improve the lives of the poor. He also did his best to get the important business of Argentina back under Argentinian control. Like China, Argentina was filled with foreign businessmen who controlled factories, trains, and ports. Oh, surprise, Great Britain owned most of the railroads. Great Britain there, they had a hand everywhere, didn't they? And the United States almost owned almost all of the car factories. Perón bought these, brought these businesses back to the people of Argentina by seizing them in the name of the government. So he was like, hey, anybody foreign? Out, 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 these are for our people in Argentina. So although Perón worked for the people of Argentina, he also used the methods of the fascists to make sure that he kept his power. If a newspaper criticized him, Perón ordered it shut down so that it could never print another issue. Remember, that kind of sounds like what the Dutch did to the um, African National Congress in South Africa. They said, you're putting on all these protests and, huh, no one's ever going to hear about them because we control the press. 
So we are really lucky. We have freedom of speech here. But these guys, he took that away. You couldn't say anything negative about him. So if a school teacher told his students that Perón's policies might not be good for the country, he lost his job. I, like Perón would fire me because here I am saying some not very nice things about him. <laughs> Anyone who objected too loudly to Perón's reforms and laws was likely to disappear mysteriously. Uh-oh. Perón called this way of running a country justo que somo. He believed that the poor people should have power, but the way to give them power was for the government to tell everyone how they could use their land and their money. Argentina did have a constitution and that gave the citizens the rights to certain freedoms, such as the right to be tried in a court if they were accused of a crime. So how did Perón get away with disappearing? Argentinians who dis disagreed with him and violating all sorts of other rights that the people were supposed to have. There was one clause in the constitution that gave the president of Argentina the power to act like a dictator if the country was in the middle of a national emergency. So Perón declared, simply declared that Argentina was suffering from an emergency. Argentinians put up with Perón's dictatorship for nine years. In part, Perón was able to keep his position because his wife, Eva, was so popular. Eva was beautiful, charming, and soft-hearted. As wife of the president, she started an organization called the Eva Perón Foundation that gave money to the poor, helped working people visit doctors, and paid for children to get an education. The poor people of Argentina called her Evita, a nickname showing their love for her. She was even nicknamed the Madonna of America for her mercy. In 1952, Evita died. She was only 33 years old. At her funeral, thousands of Argentinians lined the streets and wept out loud as her coffin was carried past. And after Eva died, Juan Perón grew more cruel. More and more Argentinians disappeared and were never seen again. The people of his country began to mutter very quietly about Perón's tyranny. Meanwhile, Argentina was growing poorer and poorer. Perón had spent huge amounts of the government's money on education and healthcare for the poor. And this was good for the poor, but eh, now the government was out of money. Perón, faced with a rapidly em emptying treasury, announced that for two years, no one in Argentina would get a pay raise. He suggested that Argentinians eat less meat and more bread so that the meat could be sold to other countries for money. Argentinians weren't too happy about the prospect of a meatless diet. So if you're a vegetarian, maybe you're like, eh, okay, I'm cool with it, it doesn't bother me. But if you're a meat eater, you're like, what? We have to sell all of our meat to make money and I can't eat it myself? That's no fair. Then Perón made himself even less popular by starting to criticize the Roman Catholic Church. He accused Catholic priests of preaching against him in their sermons and sent two of the most well-known priests back to Rome, accusing them of treason. He declared that several church holidays, days when Argentinians were accustomed to staying home, would now be regular work days. The devout Catholics of Argentina resented all of these actions. Yeah, come on, it's like, hey, we're used to getting this day off as a holiday and you're taking it away? Mm. So it makes sense, right, that Perón began to lose the loyalty of his people. Then, on June 6, 1915, 1955, the armed forces suddenly rebelled against Perón. Military planes flew over the Casa Rosada, that's where he lives, and dropped bombs on it. The rebellion only lasted a day, but Perón reacted by announcing that he would wage war on anyone who opposed him. He also ordered his supporters to attack anyone who criticized him. Avalon, can you read that next little paragraph? Even Perón's supporters were shocked by this. Perón was encouraged, ar encouraged Argentinians mm -hmm. to, to beat each other up. The army again tried to revolt. This time, soldiers managed to capture several large Argentinian cities. They began to call for Perón to resign. Wait, and resign. 
and for large Argentinians to hold new elections for another president. Fabulous. All right, Taylor, can you read that next paragraph? Yeah. Um, uh, wait, which par what? Perón left his country. Okay. okay, Perón left his country and went first to Paragu, or Par Paraguay. Paraguay, and then to Madrid in Spain. Back in Arge Argentina, his own people knocked his statues over and smashed them and chipped his name out of all of the engravings in public squares. Thank you. And yes, uh, Brooke, can you read the last paragraph? Uh, over the next 18 years, Argentina had nine different leaders. In 1973, 18 years after his fight, Juan Perón even returned to Argentina and became president again for a single year. Then at the age of 79, Juan Perón died. Thank you, that was great. So, wow, a lot of changing and shifting happening here. Can you imagine nine leaders in 18 years? I mean, like every two years, there's a new president. How many years do we have our president for? Yeah, for four years. So imagine, like, cut that in half. That's, that's a eight. lot of change. Yeah, four to eight. So that's a good chunk of time. But only one year he was president? That's a lot of shifting policies and things to get used to. So this guy, Perón, he started um, as, like, pretty popular. People were like, yeah, we're on his side. The workers of Argentina were so excited, and they loved his wife, who was so kind and such a beautiful public figure and then after she died he got meaner and meaner okay. until they booted him out and look at that at the very end they knocked down statues of him this guy that they once revered not anymore remember we've kind of talked about uh, other public figures or leaders who were worshipped almost like Mao and Ho Chi Minh doesn't work. That's a lot of pressure to put on a single human being. And as we see here, Juan Perón just wasn't up to the task in the long run. So I know that was a lot of information. And what we're going to do tomorrow is go through and kind of get the, the main highlights that we want to remember. But for now, we are going to uh, see this story come alive a little bit more. So how many of you are, are Hamilton fans? Let me see, by a show of hands. All right, very cool. Well, did you know that before Hamilton was ever written, he wasn't the um, first one to write a play, a musical about something in history. There is actually a musical about this called Evita. Evita, remember, is the, the nickname they gave to Eva Perone. So there is a whole musical about her life with her husband Juan and how they um, took power in Argentina. So I need a couple of volunteers who are going to help me. We are going to look at a song from Evita called A New Argentina. We're gonna read through the lyrics and it's gonna kind of take us into the very moment that Perón gets power in Argentina. And then at the end, we're going to watch uh, some Broadway performers bring it to life for us. So do I have an volunteer to be Mr. Juan Perón. Rhett, fabulous, my friend. Yes, okay, so you're gonna be Juan Perón. And now I need a volunteer to be Eva. Cece Marie, I love it, okay. And we've got uh, two more roles. We need the workers. So it says workers, so in, in the play, it's gonna be a lot of people, but here we'll just have one person read. Talia, awesome. We've got Talia, and then at the very end, I think there's one line, a character named Shay is going to have a line. So if someone wants just a little bit to say. Avalon, awesome, okay. So let me pull that up for us. All right, so make sure uh, Rhett, Avalon, Talia, and Cece Marie, if you can unmute yourselves so we can hear you, you are going to, um, it will be interesting, absolutely. Um, you're going to read 
the parts that you were given. Are we singing or just reading? You can just talk it. You you don't know the melody, so we'll just we'll speak it, and it'll rhyme. So that'll be kind of fun. Dice. Wait, should I start? Go for it, Rhett. Yeah. <clears throat> Dice are rolling. The knives are out. Would be the would be presidents all, all are all around. I don't say they mean harm, but they they get each give an arm to see us six feet underground. It doesn't matter what those morons say. Our nation's leaders are a feeble crew. There's only 22 of them anyway. What is 20 next to million who are you looking to? All you have to do is sit and wait, keeping out everybody, keeping out of everybody's way while you've been handled power on a plate and then one who matters have their say. And with cacos installed, you can reluctantly agree to be called. All right, so before we move on, we've got Peron saying, man, there's so many people out there who want to kill me. And Eva's like, yeah, but there's so many more who are on your side. There again, we could be foolish not to quit while we're ahead. For distance, lend, lends a cheat, uh, enchantment, and that is why all ex exiles are dis are dis Distinguished. More important, they are not. They are not dead. I can find job satisfacation in Paraguay. I put them in his room. How do you say that? Paraguay. Paraguay. That's what I thought. Wait. Um, this is crazy. This is crazy to see oh yeah. talk. When I commit political suicide, there's no risk. There's no call for any action at all. When you have unions on your side. Workers. And you, Argentina, the chains of the masses untied. And you, Argentina, the voice of the people cannot be denied. There is only one man who can lead any workers for him. He, leaves, he, he lives for your problems. He shares your ideals and your dream. He supports you for, for he loves you, understands you is one of you. If not, how could he love me? In New Argentina, the workers' battle song. In New Argentina, the voice of the people rings out loud and long. Well. Now I am a worker. I've suffered the way that you do. I've been unemployed and I've, st and I've starved and I've hated too. But I found my salvation in Peron. May the nation let him save them as he saved me. A new Argentina, Argentina, a new Argentina, we face the world together, and no dissent within. There again, we, there again, we could be foolish not to quit. Well, we're already ahead. I can see us many miles away, inactive, sipping cocktails on a terrain. Talking, taking breakfast in bed, sleeping easy, doing nothing. It's attractive. Don't think I don't like you. I often get those nightmares too. They always take some swallowing. Sometimes it's very difficult to keep momentum. If it's you you are following, don't close doors. Keep an escape clause because we might lose the big apple. But would I have done what I did if I hadn't thought if I hadn't known we would take the country. Person has a sign, Peron has per sign from the army and his avow, the disimidos are thou, are those he is marching with now. He supports you for he loves you, understands you, is one of you. If not, how could he love me? Yeah, and the desk has misados, those are the shirtless ones. So he's got all the oh, shirtless yeah. ones on his side. A new, a new Argentina, Argentina, the chains of the masses united. A new Argentina, the voice of the voice of cannot be and must, be and must not be denied. Not be denied. All right, Shay. Oh, you're muted. Oh, um, okay. Let's we'll start over. Yeah. How annoying that they have to fight elections for their cause and in Ireland having to majority of normal methods of trying to win them applause 
there are other ways of establishing authority. Everybody, a new Argentina, the change of the masses. Argentina, a new voice of the people cannot be denied. Cannot be denied. All right, very nice. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to our readers. They did such a fabulous job. Yay! Go ahead and mute yourselves again. So there we have Eva and Juan Peron saying, ah, oh, should we go for it? Should we go for it? Do we have enough support? And Evita says, yes, let's go for it. We can run this country. You are going to take power. And the workers are all very excited because here is a guy who's going to come in and say, I hear your complaints, you, you don't make enough money, you, you work so hard, and with me, you're finally going to get the justice that you deserve. And as we saw in our, in our chapter, you know, things start really good, but then they go downhill. So, uh, you guys, that was a beautiful interpretation. Mm -hmm. We are going to um, take a minute Sorry. and... All right, so while, and while we're, yes, they did very good. So while we're watching this video, let's not chat, let's pay attention. Uh, you're going to see it starts with Juan Peron and Eva kind of talking privately. And then once they're like, okay, let's go for it, they take their idea out to the streets and get the masses involved as well. So uh, for those of you who are theater fans, this is going to be such a treat. It's from uh, 1980s, the Tony Awards, which is kind of like, if you've heard of the Oscars for movies, the Tonys are kind of the same thing, but for theater. Patti Lapone, Have you ever the seen greatest this musical play? theater stars of all time. So you're Have you seen this treat. Have you seen this musical before? Uh, I haven't seen it live. I would love to. So Mandy Patinkin and Patti Lapone, they'll blow you out of the water. <laughs> So I hope you enjoy. It's not the greatest video quality in the war world, but we, we're not picky. We will make do. Um, and really look at, I want you to pay attention and see how excited the workers are when Juan and Eva come out. And pay attention too, to the relationship between Juan Peron and Eva. And does he just want power? Or does she, maybe Evita wants a little power as well. Can everyone see the screen? We're good? All right, fabulous. Yeah. The scene is the bedroom of Juan and Evita Perón. As they discuss the feasibility of his bid for the presidency, a crowd begins to gather in the street below. Dice are rolling, the knives are out. Would be presidents are all around. I don't say they mean harm, but they'd each give an arm to see us six feet underground. It doesn't matter what those morons say. Our nation's leaders are a feeble crew. There's only twenty of them anyway. Of this twenty, but two millions who are looking to you. All you have to do is sit and play, keeping out of everybody's way. I can't really hear them. I, can't hear I mean, like, they're kind of, like, lagging, and I can't, I can't really hear them. I can't hear. I can't hear. I mean, I can't hear. Oh, when you have unions on your side, they are Thank <laughs> you. 
I can't hear anything. I know that uh, the video was kind of maybe glitchy for some of you. Um, so if you'd like, I can actually post that in our Google Classroom so you can watch it when you have like maybe a, be a better connection. But what did we think? There is a lot of emotion there, right? Um, what, what's the sign? That was the riot when they wanted that? I couldn't hear it because it was glitching, but what was that? Right. So they were saying, yeah, we want Peron to be our leader. A new Argentina under this new leader, Juan Peron. And do you think Juan Peron could have been elected without Eva? No. no. Probably not. Why? Then they... Because she, he, she yeah. encouraged him? Yeah. She totally encouraged him. And a lot of people, well, they were like, uh, I don't know, Juan Peron, we're not the biggest fan, but Eva, she seems really cool. She seems really nice. So they voted for him really to support her. And we kind of saw that. After yeah, she has a very powerful. Very powerful. She has a very powerful voice. So, and I you're going to be sent later today, or your parents will, uh, links to the Google Classroom. So that'll give you access to this video if you'd like to watch it again. Um, and then tomorrow what we're going to do is go through and actually outline the chapter so that we get all so of the... Like, we, um, we, got the we got the Google Classroom from uh, the other teacher. Perfect. Okay, then you're already got... good to go. I just so, sent it out. Oh, okay. A couple things... Uh. I know this is a lot of your guys' oh. first day, so we want to make sure just a couple of little classroom things, right? So stay muted unless you're actually like raising your hand to talk. The second thing, the class chat, that's the same as talking out loud. So that is not for talking back and forth to each other or s saying silly, goofy things that aren't on topic. We're going to use that just to ask questions or maybe give a, a nice constructive comment. And also there's no drawing on the board. So I know none of you, if we were in real, like an actual classroom, would run up to the front of the classroom and grab the pen out of my hand and start scribbling on the board. So if you scribble on the shared screen, that's essentially what you're doing. Let's not do that, right? We're gonna be respectful. We're not gonna color on the screen that everyone can see. So those are just a couple things to keep in mind while we're all getting used to the online platform. And you guys are doing a really stellar job. So, uh, we have just another minute left, but what did we think about that song? Very high pitched. Very high, yes. Not very few people can sing like she can. <laughs> Would you want to be lit? Yes, Brooke. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Like it was really, really high pitched. So we're not, we're not critiquing their performances here. I'm talking about um, what would it be like to live in that moment? Would do you think it'd be really exciting or really scary? Or maybe both? Yes. Brooke. Really kind scary. of like tired, scary, and disappointment or something, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of change going on. Uh, there's a lot of unknown uncertainty. And for some people, having a figure that's as confident and poised as uh, Juan and Eva Perón, it would have been like, oh, thank goodness, we finally have a leader that we can put our trust in. 
But as we've seen from other countries, it's not a good idea to put all of your hope and all of your confidence in a single or even single couple of human beings because human beings are not perfect. And things, even if they seem like they're good now, they may not stay that way forever. So you guys did a great job today. Thank you for those of you who read. You did a beautiful job. Uh, and I am very much looking forward to seeing you all here again tomorrow. So I'll see you then. It was, you Bye. it was funny how much it was glitchy. Kind of funny.